Hi, this is a tutorial series where I teach you how to make a puzzle game that uses the camera. This whole project is done using only vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. And a small part of it, this one here, is done using PHP and MySQL to save and load scores from the database. The game works on desktop computers, but also on mobile devices like phones and tablets. By following this series, you'll learn many useful things that you can later apply in other projects. In the last video, we implemented the way to access the camera. We saw how to make it work with webcams, but also how to support mobile devices as well. Today, we'll continue with part two, how to cut the image into pieces like this. For now, we'll consider rectangle shapes, but later in the series, I'm gonna show you how to make puzzle-like pieces like these ones. Let's begin. We continue with the code from last time. Let me just put Mr. Chibi-san here again. We now define the piece class and specify a row and column index in the constructor. We will have an array of these pieces and define it globally here. We also need to specify how many rows and columns there are, and I will store these here. Now, to initialize the pieces, we begin with an empty array and iterate through the rows using the i variable and through the columns using the j variable and add a new piece defined using these two indices into the array. To be able to draw the pieces, we are going to implement a draw method that takes the context as a parameter. Let's first just draw a simple rectangle here to see if what we did so far is working. Now, we need to figure out the location and the size of these pieces based on the number of rows, columns, and the size of the video on the screen. I will enter these placeholders here and calculate the exact values in the constructor. The width and height of each piece is just the width and height of the area divided by the number of columns and rows, respectively. I set here the x and y to be so that each piece is defined to be at the correct location at first. Even though this is a puzzle game where the player needs to find out what the correct locations are, it helps to start with the solved configuration when developing the game. You'll see. I realize now that x and y could actually be defined after we have the width and the height, and then define them using the width and height like this. The code is clearer in this way. We now need a way to draw the pieces. We do this here by just iterating through all of them and calling the draw method using the global context. Okay. I think we're ready to debug now. Oh, I forgot to call the stroke method here. Without it, nothing will be drawn. Let's see, I'll refresh and... Nothing is different just yet. It's because the pieces array is empty. We need to call the initialize pieces function and we'll do this in the console for now. Okay, now something happens and it looks good. Three rows and three columns, but it's not ready yet. These are just empty rectangles drawn on top of the video. Look, if I comment out drawing the video image here, you can just see the grid. Each piece needs to crop a specific part of the video and show it. We do that by adding a call to the draw image method here. We use another version of the draw image method a more complicated one that accepts nine arguments. After we specify the video, we need to tell the left part where the cropping happens, then the top part, then the width and the height. These values are relative to the video and whatever the resolution and aspect ratio it has. 
Now, after we specify where to take the image data from, we need to say where to draw it. This is easy. It's just at the piece X and Y location, and we need to use its width and height. OK, it now looks the same as before, but each piece is showing the part of the video it's responsible for. We can actually parameterize this function here to support any number of rows and columns. And we just call it here with default values in the beginning. We can test in the console by using different sized grids. Do you also use developer tools when debugging? Do you use the console or do you use breakpoints instead? Let me know in the comments what you think is the best way to do this. Let's randomize the location of the pieces next. We'll just write a function where we iterate through all of them and generate a random location for each piece. We set here the x and y respectively. We call this in the console and... It's not what we expect. The random values are between 0 and 1, meaning that they are all pretty much in the top left corner here. I'm not gonna go into how half pixels work, so let's just move on and scale these by the canvas width and height. Okay, much better. But you can see that some pieces go outside the screen here. We can prevent that by subtracting the piece width and height here when scaling. OK, good. Now, the reason why we see duplicate pieces, ones randomly distributed and others that are behind and in the correct locations, is that we are not clearing the canvas before redrawing each frame. If we do this here, and randomize the pieces again, we get what we expect. Let's test different grid sizes as well. Neat. I actually want to have an idea of where the pieces need to go. It will make debugging easier, and maybe we can keep it as a easy mode or, or something like that. So I'll move this clear rect call to the top, set a 50% transparency, and uncomment drawing the video we had earlier. Then I reset the transparency so that only the video is semi-transparent, but the pieces are drawn normally after that. In this way, the video on the background shows where I need to move the pieces, but it's faded, so it won't be confused with the actual pieces. Okay, that's it for today. Please like and share this video if you know somebody interested. In the next part, I'll teach you how to implement drag and drop for the pieces like this. See you next time.